And we are the old-fashioned aces. All right, I forgot to shoot fly. That's good. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. We're rolling. Yeah. Okay. What's here's, it called? Here's a little song we learned from Freeman Fontenot. It's called "Shoe Fly." Don't bother me. We've got two accordions, two fiddles, and four bows. <laughs> yeah. What about my guitar? Old fashioned. And one guitar. <laughs> all right. We we'll play 15 instruments, and they're all fiddles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to feature Mr. David on this next song. Here's the first Cajun song I ever wrote. Uh, it took me like 15 minutes to write it. And I wasn't sure. Is that if long? It, I, didn't, I wasn't sure if it was any good, and I sang it for the guitar player who spoke real good French. And it, when I sang the song for him, we were in the, on the way home from New Orleans. I sang him the song, and he goes, it was the same woman. That's when I knew <laughs> I had done it right. <laughs> so, same woman. This is a song about the same woman. Cut it in. <laughs> Après 
called Les Amours et Les Beaux Jours and we took it and put some music to it and we were invited to take part in a project uh, recreating the songs collected from a ballad singer named Cesar Vincent who is from, was he from around New Iberia? Uh, Abbeville. Abbeville. He's from around Abbeville, Louisiana. And this is one of the songs he sang and we were selected. We were chosen to this song. Given this song. Given this song. Very awfully. Chosen to have this song <laughs> bring to a record project that was released a few years ago called Travaille C'est Trop Deux. The song's about love and good times are too are good but too short. <clears throat> we make love when we can but not always when we want. normally on this song, but we instrumented the daylights out of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here we go.
Les amours, il est beau jour. I love doing that. Let's do it again. <laughs> Play it again. You give a little monkey boot at the end. Alright. Next is a uh, Bayou Tesh. Yeah. Oh, good. Where's this come from? I don't know. This song was played by a man named Columbus Fruget, an accordion player, um, and I learned it off of a 78 RPM recording that was put out in the 30s. And it's called La Vasta Bayou Tesh, the Bayou Tesh Waltz. This is the other Bayou Tesh Waltz. <laughs> this is the uh, rare and wonderful Bayou Tesh Waltz. It's not the run of the mill Bayou Tesh Waltz. That's right. <laughs> circles around the hill. <laughs> All right, this uh, last song, um, Blake actually wrote this for our, uh, the Old Fashioned Nations first and only album we have out. It's called Quelle Belle Journée, and it's uh, um, the title track of that right here. You should check out tune. Yes. <laughs> we have to tune again because you're outside. That's right. <laughs> it's been uh, fun playing for y'all. Uh, yeah. I love it. One sure, of my favorite sure are appreciative of uh, this opportunity to play for y'all. Thank you. Next time we'll be in person. That's right. <laughs> Here we go. Quel belle journée. What a beautiful day. <laughs>
right. Yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you, good night. <laughs> Blake Miller, David Greeley, Amelia Beard. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I like what's going on. <laughs> so, so we are here in Brobridge, Louisiana. Home of the Blake, bridge. Oh, the, yes. And uh, it's just right down there. And uh, we are here with Blake Miller on the old-fashioned basis. And is this what the group looks like now on a, on a regular basis? Typically. I'd say if we have a trio here in Louisiana, David is, is always our fiddle player. If he can make it, right. his schedule allows. Um, uh, but often we'll have a full band. So we'll have a drummer and a bass player as well. So. That's a different feel, isn't it? Oh, it is. Different. Really different, yeah. 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 I mean, you play a dance, I mean, you've got that full band, you've got that, that rhythm section, but but there's something really cool and very consciously traditional about the way you guys had this set up. So what was behind that? Why, why, what was the impetus to do just a really traditional Cajun band? Well, the band started because she is originally from Wisconsin and we had lots of friends. She lived in Minneapolis for a while and we went, we're going back and forth a lot and a friend that we love playing music with in Minneapolis said, hey, if you ever, guys ever want to do like a little tour going back and forth, I'd fly one way and drive the other. And so that's how this band started. Our friend AJ Scrubus. <laughs> um, that's how we, we got a game. Shrubai in French. Shrubai. <laughs> you got more than one of this family, it's a Shrubai. Yeah, I think one Christmas we, we uh, he flew down and then we all drove back and did a couple of gigs and and then after that, we decided on a band name at one of our house concerts, I think. Yeah. And then... Um, While drinking Gold Fashions, somebody yes. said, hey! <laughs> <laughs> somebody did. Um, and then decided to record because we thought it was so much fun. And, um, it's a great record. But he doesn't live here, so... Um, and, you know, David's not too bad of a fiddle player, so we asked him to... <laughs> He's an okay stand-in. <laughs> to uh, play with us while, you know, in gigs around town here. So. So you've been playing for about how long together now? Uh, we recorded, I think, like two years ago, two yeah. and a half years. Um, so, in, so maybe like three, maybe, or so. Um, and I mean, you and David have played together a lot, like yeah. in different combinations of things over the years. And Blake and I, I met Blake maybe seven or eight years ago and have played music with him, you know, some throughout the years and um, it happened very naturally yeah. and without having without us even realizing it happened yeah. yeah so the band is young but we all have all played together for longer than that so. and then how long has it been since we've been able, been able to play with it or during the because of the, the pandemic well we played one other time since it started together. a couple of weeks ago yeah right? and that's yeah. it this is only the second time that we've gotten together how does it feel to go without I mean just to to not be able to get together and play. We we're Blake and I are lucky because we live together and are able to play together whenever we want. Um, but as soon as we add a third person, the dynamic changes so much mm -hmm. that it's um, you know a pleasure to add a third person and play, with, especially with David. It's like walking around with one shoe. You can get used to it, but when you, the other shoe <laughs> comes back, it's like, oh right. Yes. <laughs> and how would you describe your sound? What are you aiming towards? What do you want people to feel when you when you're playing? Well, when we're like this, I want we want them to feel that um, they're at a party and there's just some people playing in the corner or around the fire, and that's sort of what I always think about. Especially in a trio setting like this, I feel like whenever I hear a trio, I feel like I'm at the party where they're just playing. You know, it's like a, a jam or something. I've, I've been in a lot of different bands and playing in this band is like, let's have fun. We're going to have fun. Goal number one, Yeah. have fun. And luckily that's easy because Amelia plays such great guitar. That's just, that's, that's I have to say that off the bat because that's what makes it possible. You know, when you're solid rhythm like that, it just makes everything so easy so he and I can just play. Thank you. Yeah, every sense of the word. 
Don't have to worry about keeping anything else in mind. Just jump. Be, it's so, it, with difficult rhythm, it's really heavy lifting. And with excellent rhythm, it's like surfing. It's just freedom. So. You must be a good surfer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I were, you know, if you were playing at the festival, I'd ask you to, I mean, yeah, bring that rhythm section, but then break it down and just do the trio for a few songs, too. Because it has a different feel to it. Totally. Yeah. You know, there's a different kind of, not just dynamic, but kind of sense of the song. Totally. So, I mean, you're, you're playing these traditional songs, you're, you're right within the tradition, but how have you over the years seen the tradition evolve as well? Just in Cajun music in general. Um... A lot more minor chords. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, one of the one things that we decided, I think you have more of an opinion about this, but I really like really old style traditional Cajun music going back to like early records and stuff, stuff especially with trios and without a, without a full band sound. And I think our goal in the beginning of this was to sound like that, was to emulate, you know, like the old style um, trios and, you know, Acoustic bands. Would that would that be a good? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as the music I grew up listening to and, and grew up loving and wanting to play sounded like this. You know, it's like that's how it sounded. Maybe they had a drummer, maybe they had a steel guitar, but mostly it was just this exact thing. You know. But then my taste evolved, and I do love people who push the envelope, including Mr. David here, who had did a lot of envelope pushing. And signing and sealing and and bring the envelope and watch. <laughs> I think about like Kill Bell Journée, that last song that I wrote. It's like, I love horn sections too, and so try to get that idea and bring it into a Cajun fiddle tune, and that's how you get those sort of big responses to the calls. And that it's all derived. It's not really traditional thinking in Cajun music as one of my typically think, but I feel like you can take something like that and hide it and kind of gloss over it and people won't even realize that you're doing it. Sneak it in there. Sneak it in there. I never thought of that as a horn section, but I can hear it now. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say that? Yeah, it's groovy. Come here, Connie. This is like the honorary fourth member of the band here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're trying to teach her to play the triangle. It's not going so well. Yeah, you know. She was a she was a quarantine adoption. Is that right? Yeah, we just got her a couple months ago, and she's uh, she's gotten used to live streaming. The first couple times she was barking and whining the whole time, and now she just lays in her bed. But, except for now. Well, you can tell this is live. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute. This is this is you know a quarantine interview. Yeah. Um, my mask is here. You know, ready to roll. Oh yeah. So. When you think about traditional music versus the music that, you, as you described, pushes the envelope, what's important to retain? What do you keep? What's important to the foundation? Hmm, I like that. Well, well that yeah. Yeah, yeah. The road rage traffic is good. Got some cool games around here. Yeah. The bells, were the bells? Must be a parade. No. Nah, it's going to be The bells are happening. Yeah. Bells are, uh, Just the true to downtown Pearl Bridge. <laughs> so, yeah. This is like doing a circle around us. Uh, we might be actually in that. No, I think you might be in the park. It's just another part of the culture, really. I mean, youth culture. I don't remember being that age. <laughs> they must be younger than us. So I'm not really quite into that. I've always thought it was a little too easy to hyphenate Cajun music. You know? Make it Cajun rock, or you know, well, I don't know what anyone else has ever tried, but they would tried Cajun jazz, but you know, <laughs> Cajun and something else, and you just kind of mush them together. But I like to be in the music, don't go out, I'm not reaching for anything except imagination, so that it grows naturally within itself, you know. So to extend it like that instead of. Uh, grafting anything onto it. That's what I like to do. I don't really know how to answer that question. It's what is the most important thing to retain? 
is I think it's more just the I mean it just sounds so cliche but the soul of it right I don't mean how do you even define that just, uh, there's something deep down that when it's there you know it and when it's not there it's obvious that it's missing I don't know what it is maybe it's knowing all those standards Knowing that history. Could be. Yeah. You know what? That definitely helps. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, but it certainly helps. I didn't I didn't really grow up with this music per se. I mean I heard, my dad played traditional music, so I, I heard some Cajun music because there were some friends of friends that played it, but um, I started learning it in my early twenties and I feel like the that my first love of the music was dancing to it. Mm. And that was like one of the main things that I wanted to keep you know, in involved was like the dance beat, and that's what really drives the music, and kind of has, even if it's, you know, from this really um, basic trio to like a full band or something, that's still like, um, that's the re not the reason, but one of the main reasons. It's it's driving and it's a good dance beat. I think that was that's one thing I would keep in it. I do you think the dance element is very important? Well, a lot of bands. I mean, there are quite a few bands that play covers, and they play the traditional songs, and that's what they do. And you guys expand that. You know, you're writing your own songs. So, how do you do that in a way that keeps it traditional? I don't find that all that easy, actually. Whenever I write a song, it's just, to begin with, I can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> I really have to practice it long and hard to be able to play it for people. I don't know why I can't write anything easy. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, it just comes out weird. Uh, it's still, you know, it's got the acoustic sound. It's got the same instrumentation and everything. Really, pretty often, I write what I write will be strange. Uh, I'm not trying, I'm just trying to let it flow. I'm not trying to make a new Cajun record, Cajun song, right down the line usually. Not but, trying to create a standard. Just let it come out, whatever it wants to be. Yeah, but that song, you know, that last one, I mean, you know, you mentioned more here. We wrote this as a record, you know, but it, it, it fit right in with everything else. I mean, you know, it didn't seem, you know, oh, this is an apple and an orange, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's, a, it's an original, but it seemed to fit right within the tradition. I think there, there are certain devices that people have used for a long time and I mean the, the toolbox is wide and varied and it's really sort of like plug and play you can just take find different combinations of all these basic ideas that have been used for a hundred years or more and writing new tunes and if you get a, a unique combination then you can say that you wrote that tune or even if it isn't that good because there's only so many combinations right this has been going on a long time. Right. Eventually you gotta throw in something completely new and every now and then you stumble upon something that's kind of new and then you could just fill, I find, for me, I just fill it in with things that feel comfortable and, and familiar and not try to, not try to uh, make it sound different but try to make it sound the same. Does that make sense? <laughs> Not, not trying not to write something that's like, oh yeah, that's like a completely new idea. So not wow. avant-garde, but still fresh. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. Not avant-garde, but still fresh. I gotcha. So why is it important to sing in Cajun French? To write in Cajun French, to sing in Cajun French? It's just a, the, a beautiful language that really, I mean, it's poetic in a way that I don't know, I, I, English, you can say anything in French and have it just be so beautiful. And with English, even the most beautiful thing you could say can sound ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a way of preserving the language, I think that's... Um... Yeah, and it gets back to like what's important to keep, and I think that's a big element of the soul of the music is found in the language, and the way that the language sings itself. It, it happened on its own, but it's really not easy to still have this many people speak a language 
that they were speaking in 1635 when they left France. That's some hard-headed people, okay? And uh, that's something that's worth keeping going, if you can, or at least to be a part of. I don't know if I'm keeping anything going. Sometimes I'll see somebody singing a song I wrote on the dance floor. It makes me feel good, you know? At least it's not my fault if it disappears, you know? But when I'm doing this, I'm singing my grandfather's language. And that's really important to me. And not only that, it's Louisiana French, which is, can't learn it in school, you know? It works everywhere. Uh, it's really amazing, it really is. You guys have played a lot of places, um, and together, but also just in various incarnations of music. You played a lot of places internationally, you know, and people connect with this music. You know, that's it. You know, they do. They feel it. They get it. Yeah. What is what is it about this music that people connect with just everywhere? <laughs> I don't know. You got it. I have an idea. Okay. Yeah. Um, people hear fiddles, and often fiddles and accordions. You go traveling abroad, you go to Sweden, you know, you go to Ireland, they're used to fiddles and accordions, but when we play them, like, whoa, you know, it sounds really different. I'm in the green room at a concert in Cape Breton, and I pull out my fiddle, I start to warm up, and every head in the room turns, because it's full of rhythms. It's just not marching music. This is hip shaking music. We are infused with East African and Caribbean, Afro Caribbean rhythms. And uh, because of the, the fact that this was a French Catholic colony, and those people, the Afro Caribbeans, could on their day off play drums and dance just like they were in Africa. It was totally not a problem here. You know? Uh, out of the question in the rest of the South, but here it was fine. So uh, that just permeated everything. And uh, I think a lot of people don't really realize, but when we play, we're not, you know, on some beat or another. We're all over the place. And uh, it, that moves people, I think. I do love being at a festival or a concert a situation where there's people from all over the place and they play all kinds of music. And you're the only Louisiana act there. And as soon as you start to warm up or play a little bit, it's true. Like everybody's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even if, you know, because a lot of times people have never even heard. Or if they have, it's been some sort of, sort of watered down version that they've encountered through Hollywood or something, you know. And it's, but when you hear real people do, like, doing the real thing like this, it's it's world changing in a lot of ways for a lot of people and it's fun to like see their faces you know because you, you, I, I play the accordion right what is nerdier than the accordion <laughs> first of all you bring it up you take it out this thing out the box and it's like wow I've never seen one like that you know and then you pull on it and they're like holy cow <laughs> you know it's fun it's fun to blow people's minds <laughs> that's with what I was gonna easy say things. too um, <laughs> I feel like everyone wants to hear about that instrument, you know, and there's accordions all in different genres of music and different kinds of them all over the place, but I feel like people are very curious about what they are and, you know, how they're built and it's, um, I don't think that that necessarily is why people love Cajun music, no. but it's a, it, it's definitely a, um, a factor in it. Powerful little thing. You can hear it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> My favorite thing that people say though is like, my grandfather used to play the accordion, but he played the real accordion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my favorite thing. Yeah, you get that every show, probably. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Some ancestor or somebody in yeah. their family playing the piano the accordion. Well, just yeah. last one is for anyone, everyone. What's one of your happiest memories playing music? Hmm. Right this moment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a good moment. It was a good moment. Happiest moment playing music. What do you like to share? <laughs> I don't, when I think about that question, I don't, it's hard for me to pinpoint a specific moment. 
but more just every time that I'm on a stage, slightly elevated, so like this high above everyone's head, and you can just look out over a packed dance floor and see everyone going up and down at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like whenever that happens, that's my favorite moment. And it's not really like one specific time, because it happens all the time in my plays. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, but when when that does happen, when you yeah. can get that to happen, that's the best. Well, the reason for music is to get people to focus on something beautiful. And when you can get a large room full of people focused on something beautiful, that's a good accomplishment. You know, we need that. Uh, one of my happiest ones, um, Nick Spitzer played us on the radio the other day when we were at the... Uh, Fourth of July celebration on the National Mall in 1994, and there were about a hundred thousand people who could see us, and about three hundred thousand who could hear us, and we were on the radio nationwide, and uh, that's a lot of focus. So, <laughs> I, I it was I got up on that stage in front of all that, and it was so overwhelming that my nerves just ran and hid, <laughs> and I was totally calm. And, you know, I played as well as I ever played in front of all that. That was really fun. Was fun. <laughs> to get up and be in that position and just be able to burn it up. That was a blast. That happens once in a while. I don't know if I have any specific moments of it, but I'm re re remembering moments of, like, late night campfire jams that, um, that you stay up so late that... You know, there's only like three or four people left the real over sickos, or something. I call them. <laughs> yeah, and I don't. I, I feel like I don't do that that often. But when it does happen, and there's moments like that, that like you're one of three or four people that stay up, like at a festival or something, and there's people that you don't see all the time or you don't always get to play with, and sometimes from pe people from different genres of music, and um, some of those jams have been so awesome that you just don't want to go to bed. And, um, I think I. I think I like what Blake said about playing for dancers and having that be like um, those are really good moments too but sitting by a campfire or like having a small jam like that is probably high up on the list too it's pretty cool so if we ever get large crowds of people again yeah <laughs> well we're again ready. have fun until then it's all the internet small crowds are good yeah. COVID will pass yeah COVID will pass yeah. <laughs> COVID will pass. Yeah. yeah. So it'll pass. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So what's next for the band? End, end of quarantine. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I haven't booked any gigs, to be honest. Um, I think that this band is sort of a side project for, um, for Blake. He plays with the Revelers and travels with them more full time. And, um, you know, David has a solo career, and it's sort of like a side project, and this is my only, like, band that I play with all the time, but I have a day job, and, um, I think since quarantine hit, it's been like, we just stopped, I st stopped reaching out to figure out, you know, to play more gigs and travel, because we just don't know what, where it's going, um, but we have been thinking about another record, I don't know, um, That's what I was going to say, it's, it's been a time you made a new record. Yeah, yeah, it's been a couple years, and, um, you know, we have a, a bunch of new stuff we've been working on. Don't lose my number. And playing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and we were we recorded just with AJ last time, and but our band is so like fluid with a bunch of different people, so we were thinking about doing another record with, you know, including more of those people, and not really sure which direction or when we're gonna do it, but um, someday soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that we're we have the time and energy, maybe not the money, but the <laughs> the time. We need um, the hard do part it. done. Yeah, yeah. Writing, writing the songs and picking the good ones that you want to do. Right. Well, I'm sure it'll sound awesome. Hopefully. Thank you. Paul goes to plan. <laughs> well, thank you guys. This has been awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having us. The online festival. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, it has actually seemed like a festival sometimes, you know, playing, you know, seeing these bands play, seeing their joy. Every single one of them has just been so happy to play. Mm -hmm. Well, I stopped a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> I was, you know, kind of curious about what you guys are thinking. Questions, about, so. comments, concerns from the film crew? Okay.